What is up? I'm Moana Turtle and welcome to our Q&A. This is our celebrate part of our celebration for hitting 1000 subs on YouTube and I want to give a huge thanks to you all for helping us get there. All right, I do want to say something so if and as we go through this, if any of these sound uh, very premeditated, that's because they all are. I actually recorded this entire video. And then when I was done, I was like, oh my God, I did not hit the record button. So, and that was actually, we'll see how long, long this video ends up. But I feel like I was talking for like 30 minutes and um, yeah, I wasn't recording. So we're gonna go through the entire thing, or at least I'm gonna go through the entire thing again. So huge thank you once again. And thank you for everyone that submitted questions. We're gonna go through as many of them that uh, I'm willing to go through. Uh, we didn't, we're not gonna hit every single one. There was some stuff, whether it's around like financial stuff or personal stuff that you know just chose not to include in the video uh so if that was one of your questions sorry about that uh let me just say real quick so our first video for this i want a turtle channel went up on december december 17th 2018 and i punched it into google like how many days has it been uh since sunday i'm probably will go up on monday uh, it has been 600 days like oh my god 600 days exactly that's crazy since we started our channel in that time we have put out 855 videos that does include our live streams that we do on twitch and youtube that equals this part's pretty crazy 1.4 videos a day for 600 days that is the i want a turtle tcg channel and uh, 125,000 views that comes out to about 150 views per video with 11,000 likes. So thank you all for helping us make that happen. Uh, it's been a wild ride and I'm really happy with how far the channel has come. Um, and uh, all right, without further ado, let's get into some of these questions. Thank you all for the questions. All right, we're starting with our good friend from the Netherlands, Nellis Van, I never took the time to try to say this name. Nels Van M. Bergen. <laughs> Sorry, I'm pretty sure I butchered that. Um, so we're going to skip through a lot of the comment, but eventually the questions. Actually, two, by the way. Uh, how did you get into the TCG and two? Actually, we'll address the first part. How did we get into the TCG? Actually, I was not aware of Pokemon. And uh, man, this was way back in like when I was a kid. Uh, my bro, my older brother actually asked my mom, was like, hey, look, can I buy this thing? I think we probably went to the mall or something, and he bought a pack of this cards. And then we, I, I distinctly remember being in the supermarket, um, and we must have opened the pack of cards there, and, and I'm pretty sure it was a base set, first edition. And at the time, I didn't even know what first edition was. I probably didn't know what first edition was for like another year, probably two years, and let alone like how, how important it was. And we actually pulled a Alakazam. So I'm pretty sure we had a, at one point, Mint. <laughs> uh, first edition Alakazam. And I think eventually I convinced my brother to trade it to one of my classmates for a Gyarados. Maybe it was unlimited Gyarados. Oh, that's a pretty bad trade. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I think when I really got into it though, was when the show started. Oh my gosh, that show was so good. Uh, I feel like as a kid, that world, the world of Pokemon was just amazing. Like we didn't have a pet. And I think when we were kids, obviously we wanted like a dog or something. And so like Pokemon is like, all right, you basically have like your your, your pet and like you, you train with them, they, they, they battle and stuff, you catch more. It was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. I, I wish this was real. <laughs> So then I got like come totally into it and then mentioned the TCG and stuff. Um, and then kind of like my cousin had like the, the base set starter thing with the like Charmander and Machop featuring Machamp, uh, the first edition Machamp. <laughs> and all right, let's get to the second part of the question, Nellis. Uh, what are your most fond memories of Pokemon? All right, so um, yeah, thanks for the question. And all right, we'll probably hit this. Actually, no, we'll go with this one for my one of my most fond memories is uh this was at the time so had very few base set cards probably bought like a couple packs and then jungle came out we did i did buy on day release of jungle we went to the store i think everyone's buying booster boxes and i was like we got to the front it's like i'll take one pack <laughs> mom got me a pack of jungle first edition don't remember what i pulled um i'm not sure how i got there but my most fun so this was when Fossil just came out. 
Uh, I guess I, I didn't spend a lot of time at the malls, but a lot of my stories involve going to the mall. And I'm going, we're leaving the mall, I believe, and then I see one of my classmates, one of my close friends that also was into Pokemon and we would hang out on the weekend and stuff. And it's like, hey, what's up, guys? And then they're like, oh, we just bought some fossil packs and we're gonna go open them. They're, they were so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Hope you guys get some cool stuff. And then uh, he's like, oh, you know, do you want one? And we were like kids and we did not have, uh, I, I didn't have a lot of disposable income for cards and stuff like that. So like, you know, that was unheard of just to like hand, a, hand someone a pack. And I was like, no, I can't do that. No, you, you guys enjoy. And he's like, no, no, here you go. And like that blew me away, uh, you know, so kind. And then, um, yeah, I actually pulled a Hitmonlee out of that in his first edition Hitmonlee. I still have the card, it's actually off at PSA. So definitely one of my fondest memories um, with, with that friend of mine. And yeah, it's pretty, pretty crazy. All right, let's see. Get wrecked ass. Do you wear pants when you record videos and stream? Uh, as weird as a question, no, no matter what, that's a weird question, but it's more of an inside joke. Uh, and they're like, oh, do you have, I think it was started around like, oh, use channel points to ankle review or something that turned into like, oh, does, does Turtle have legs? Like, dude, I'm, I'm standing, I use a standing desk. <laughs> and then I, I kind of told like, yes, I do have pants, or though these days I'm wearing shorts. In fact, I have a like pair of sweatpants that have like Pokemon on it. And I was going to show it uh, for this video, but I'm in one of those situations where I feel like I see it all the time. And then when I'm looking for it, I couldn't find it and uh wanted to record this so yes i, or I wear shorts <laughs> just call me quinn as what would an i want a turtle gx card have as attacks and abilities Ooh, good question i think the first time i read is what does the gx attack do but it's attacks and abilities man as far as abilities who doesn't love card draw um something about drawing cards and attack is like Ah, oh, tutors. Anything that could find something. <laughs> they want a turtle GX attack. Just uh, search, search. Uh, open up a pack of cards because that's what we do on this channel, and use it. That sounds like a like an unhinged or a unset from Magic the Gathering. Good question. All right, let's see. Felix asks, "When did you fall in love with Pokemon?" All right, so yeah, so we kind of mentioned this, but yeah, it had to have been the show. Um, then my brother bought a pack, and then my cousin had the, the two-player thing with Machop and Charmander, and then like, yeah, we were hooked. Completely hooked, although we didn't play a lot. We, it, eventually we kind of got to more collecting. Um, I felt like the, we weren't that good at the game, so actually it usually was pretty stale, or like, it would just snowball in someone's favor, like, look, I got my stage two somehow managed to get four energies on it and that's just gg you know like good luck taking this out all right let's see uh suchit s hey there oh it's feather arrow my question is what advice would you give to aspiring streamer that could be about managing time between stream and personal life or creating entertaining content passerby um so i think the most important thing is actually just to be successful in this kind of stuff you just need to have a huge amount of passion for it and it's about how well you can convey your passion and love for whatever it is. Um, so this is for streamers, like, I don't know, streaming. Uh, I, I don't consider myself a big streamer, but uh, I, don't know, I feel like I, at this point, I kind of stream to hang out with you guys and just have a good time. If it wasn't for streaming, I probably would not be too into the competitive side. I think I would just be a spectator. Um, but because of uh, you guys teaching me what's going on, you know, Obviously, if you're a good player, that's a huge plus. I don't consider myself a good player. I feel like I learn while I stream. I don't teach while I stream. If people ask questions, I'll answer them to my best abilities, but more often than not, chat knows better than me, including yourself. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, engage with the audience. Um, I, feel, I do feel like, I think it's important to have a good time. And you know, if you're having fun, especially if you're having fun with the viewers, you know, it's pretty infectious and then people will just want to come back for more. But um, I do want to come a little bit about the time management. I do think, you know, especially in the beginning, it's to like, oh yes, I'm going to go hard. I'm going to like, I don't know, stream every day or something, uh, stream whatever, six hours in a row. And I do think, I do think burnout could be a thing. Um, and definitely for any kind of content creating, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So, you know, balancing, uh, whether it's a work-life balance, personal life, uh, and streaming balance ho or hobby, personal life, 
and work you know whatever or if you have a job and stuff like that or school or whatever yeah it's definitely put a lot of thought into how you're going to balance those kind of things because i think to be successful you know it's not about doing it for a month it's doing it for years 600 days for for this channel uh, so hope that helps let's see infinite umbreon well i've seen such a uh, so this is referring to darkness of blaze bmb boxes uh, what is your opinion on the rumor of Rainbow Charizard in Champion's Path? All right, I'll just talk about Champion's Path real quick. I'm cautiously optimistic. Actually, but I think it's going to be... So as far as those kind of sets, like Dark uh, Dragon's Majesty, which wasn't that great. And then we got Hidden, uh, Shining Legend, which was pretty cool. Had some shinies in it. Uh, then we got... You had that Test Tube Mewtwo. That card's so cool. I think that card's kind of underrated. And then we got Hidden Fates. Absolute home run, absolute masterpiece. I don't think they're going to have the next Hidden Fates anytime soon, and I definitely don't think it's going to be Champion's Path. I think the the Rainbow Rare Charizard, I believe it, uh, because I think that is their best bet, borderline only bet, to making having success that is Hidden Fates. And I think it like the how the pre-orders are going is like I think it's just FOMO. I'm, I don't really think it's deserved. I think anyone that's struggling to get pre-orders is just be patient. Absolutely do not pay more than you need to. Like whatever the amount of stuff is in like $5 a pack. It's kind of like what I consider MSRP. And don't overpay. Uh, but yeah, I totally believe the Charizard is going to be in there. I think if it's not, definite like... Alright, this thing's just going to be Dragon's Majesty. Um, I feel like that product, if it's expensive, just because no one bought it. <laughs> Shining Legends, a lot of people bought it, but even that, um, you know, you can still find every now and then. And uh, yeah, if you're struggling to get ETB, don't overpay. Um, I think, I bet, two years from now, you'll still be able to find it. All right, let's see, Danny Price, congrats on hitting this milestone. My question is, what is one card that you don't have in your collection that you would like to get? Excellent question. I absolutely cannot narrow it down to one. Um, you know, there's a lot of obvious answers, like, you know, uh, first edition, base set, PSA 10, whatever, but like, I do think something that was within my range, like maybe years ago, uh, base set, PSA, unlimited PSA 10 Charizard, like, I, I did this in a Pokemon, Pokemon, I was like, alright, let's just take a look at this, right now it's about a thousand, I think now it's like four or five thousand, and it's like, it's a thousand, I feel like that's kind of high, so I'm gonna wait for, maybe it'll come down a little bit, like, oh boy, was I wrong, um, so that one I would like because... I was in my range, so it's kind of like, I don't really believe in regrets, but if I could do it over again, I would definitely have gotten one of those. Um, let's see, I was kind of late, to, or am, was super late to kind of like understanding like, oh, how cool the crystals are. Uh, so I don't have like most of the crystals, I think I just have like a couple, but they're just like raw and reverse and bent in half. Uh, let's see, on the Japanese, so many cool Japanese promos. Um, the Uniqlo promos come to mind and um yeah I, like i i do like the idea of collecting a certain card in all the different languages so like shiny charizard i think we have all of them that i'm aware of we, so we have english korean chinese japanese if there's other languages let me know and i'll be on the hunt all right let's see what else we got excuse me when did you fall in love with we answered that um and we answered that. Sorry, I got kind of lost. What keeps you going uh, doing the channel? What keeps me going? Uh, it's just the passion for the hobby. If this kind of became some, there's some questions later on about like making money and stuff like that. Like, I'll just put this out there. As far as our videos are monetized, so if you'll notice, like, if you see an ad in the beginning or at the end of the video or in the middle, whatever. As far as the amount of money we've gotten from YouTube, it is zero dollars and zero cents. Uh, the videos do kind of like accrue money, but like it's so little that we haven't seen it. Um, so it's purely passion for the hobby. Um, if, if people are considered like, oh, this is kind of like a part-time job, it is a part-time job that doesn't pay anything. Uh, so it is 100% just, you know, this is just a hobby that I find a lot of passion and I enjoy sharing it with you all. And that's what keeps me going. Uh, let's see, Ben F Productions. Uh, when slash how old were you when you first got into collecting and playing the game and what are some challenging parts of collecting? Yeah, so uh, I was, you know, base set, jungle, fossil era, and uh, then kind of like got back into it maybe like 2017. 
challenging parts. So I, it's hard to say like what to do more. I kind of kind of talk about what not to do. It's just like get caught up in hype. Um, you know, I feel like one of the, I can think of two examples for myself. You know, oh, shiny charges are so cool. I bought a BGS 9.5, kind of like towards like the apex of the initial like <laughs> the initial wave or not wave, but um, when it first came out. And then like the price went down. It's like, oh my gosh, that was so dumb. Um, so I guess my point here is like the challenging part is knowing what you're doing, which is sounds like an obvious piece of advice, but you know, do some research, figure out. You know, take a look for older cards, take a look at historical data. All right, this is what the price looks like and figure out like, all right, what do I think it's gonna do from now? Especially if you're collecting and you don't, when you wanna get like bang for the buck, uh, do I think it's gonna go up and how fast and is it worth it to buy it now? Um, and then for more modern stuff, like is this thing going to still go up and then bottom out later? Uh, I feel like, oh, perfect example, Reshizard. I thought that card was so cool. Open lot of unbroken bonds, zip pull, I think one or two. I bought like two more for like $200. I think right now it's like 130 or something like that. Went down quite a bit. Um, so, you know, figure out what the graph, think about what the graph might look like and then try to make informed decisions from there. And I feel like one, that's the challenging part, but two, actually I find that super fun. Uh, we're gonna, I'll get more into this later. But uh, thanks for the question, Ben. Madden Gaming, my question is, why do you want a turtle? Yes, here we go. All right. We're going back to, I believe I was four years old at the time. We, uh, we were on a family vacation. We were in Florida, going to Disney World and all that kind of stuff. And we are in a restaurant. I have no idea what the restaurant is. I have no idea what I ate. But I do remember, they had a crane game. And there were some stuffed animals in it. And it was a couple kids around there. But he went up to it and I was like, oh man, look at that one. That'd be cool. And uh, then this this like older kid's like, oh look, I got this guy. And he did it with one quarter. Like, oh my gosh, this guy, guy must be the best crane game person ever. And so he had this cute little turtle. And I don't know, maybe I was staring at it or something. And he must have noticed. And so I feel like a lot of my fond memories are just like, uh, you know, such when interaction with other people that are like beyond generous and he was like he says you know do you want this turtle and i was like no no you know you got that and you know it's good job and he's like here no you can have them so a complete stranger uh gave like this little turtle stuffed turtle to me and in somewhere in florida and from there that was like my first stuffed animal turtle and it kind of went from there it's like i treasured it um for for many reasons and yeah Many years later, here we are with the I Want a Turtle channel. So that's why I want a turtle. Um, funny tangents. Uh, I think maybe this was around when I was in college. My mom told my girlfriends, like, under any circumstance, do not allow, John my name is Jonathan, Jonathan to buy a turtle <laughs> as a pet. Uh, the reason being, because like, uh, I think I would be good about taking care of it, but she didn't believe that. And I guess I could have like disease and stuff. So I don't actually have a turtle. So it's kind of like revolves around um, like having that stuffed animal. All right, let's see. Uh, have you ever had any problems with any other YouTubers? Uh, ironically, yes. Like I find that like so bizarre considering like this is just like a hobby and it's, I don't know. The fact that there is any kind of drama that includes myself, I find very strange. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. All right, let's see, Sereno. Uh, let's see, Turtle Man's credible, reaching this amazing milestone. Let's get on the road for 2K. Um, hope everyone's getting amazing pulls and darkness of Blaze. Uh, nice, let's see, what's the question? Also, I was wondering what deck you think will be best format in darkness of Blaze? Kind of a boring answer, but I think it might be ADPZ. Um, Dragapult feels really weak lately. Uh, Peek around, I feel like it's losing a lot of good stuff. You know, Thunder Mountain, like Coco, it's like, all right, now you gotta wait. <laughs> you know, attacking one turn is not, might not be, it'll be really difficult. Uh, let's see. Um, I don't think, e I think, I don't think Eternatus will be that good, at least in standard. I'm happy to be wrong. Uh, I'm really excited for, I'm sure, lots of people to try and I'm curious where that'll go. But if I had to bet, if I had to guess, I'm gonna say ADPZ will be better. Uh, Center Scorch sounds fun, sounds pretty straightforward. Uh, so that could be a contender. What else we got? Uh, 
yeah, I'm not sure beyond that. Uh, oh, actually, you kind of mentioned, oh, at least you got Decidueye. I think Decidueye will be an interesting X Factor, just like a wrench, potential wrench in every matchup, kind of like Obstagoon, what it was for some period of time. Uh, and it's like, Decidueye, do you have an answer for Decidueye? And is it prized? If not, and that's my only Pokemon, kind of like a lone Obstagoon thing, like, all right, do you have an answer? The answer is no. Like, all right, GG, let's scoop and go on to the next match. Turtle, what is your daily routine? Um, so weekends are kind of like, uh, you know, I don't stream on the weekends. I actually don't do too much video content on weekends that much anymore either. So it's kind of like we just do whatever. During the work week though, uh, I kind of describe it as, I'm pretty like an early riser, I guess. Um, I'm not sure I describe myself as a morning person, but uh, my first work call, um, or work meeting, now work call is at 6.30 a.m. So if I'm ever like, it seems like I'm eager to end like a stream around 10 p.m. That's kind of wise. I can get some sleep for 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 the next day. Um, I think at one point my alarm would go off at 4.30 when I was like heavy on, I'm going to do some kind of workout before work. Uh, now it goes off at 5.30. Maybe I can sneak something in more, more often than I snooze a couple times and then kind of just have some coffee, read some email, read, catch up on uh, what the latest of the Pokemon market is, if there's any Pokemon news, and then in time for my 6.30 call. Uh, from there, you know, just doing work till like 3.34. Uh, try to, maybe sometimes I'll sneak in like a home workout, or just like push-ups and stuff like that. And um, yeah, then after that, sometimes I'll record a video. Uh, we obviously have to eat dinner and stuff like that. And then on uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we have the stream at 7 p.m. Let's see. Ernan. Hey, Nan P. What's your favorite card artwork from comments and uncommons from Sun and Moon slash Sword and Shield sets? That is an awesome question. Such a Nan P question. If you guys haven't checked out his Instagram page, I definitely recommend you do so. One of the more artistically tasteful ones as far as Pokemon cards go. Uh, so I did have to take a look because like I was like I'm kind of blank on this, but I know there are some. So I kind of like scrolled through a uh, website that kind of had all the arts, and I do like I feel like wheezing and coughing for such a like I feel like in the beginning of Pokemon like because James <laughs> like coughing kind of got a bad rap. He was never that cool, but the artworks, especially recently, I feel like are really cool with uh, coughing and wheezing. I feel like they kind of have a reminds me of, like Rick, Rick and Morty kind of art style. Let's see, I, I just opened up a few tabs for cool artworks. I feel like Gengar, Gengar is usually like a hollow or rare. So not exactly, but I feel like Gengar al almost always has a pretty cool artwork, especially even historically. Unbroken Bonds, Poliwag. Take a look, there's two of them. I think you'll know what I'm talking about. It always makes me laugh. Uh, Unbroken Bonds, Grin Ninja. He's like in the shadow of a Charizard and they're about to do, stuff's about to go down. Um, this must have been a kind of like how they kind of have their tag teams and they're about to fight. I actually love that idea. Where it's like referencing other cards. I think like Hitmonchan, Hitmonlee, and more recent set did that. That was just okay. Tortuga, Unified Minds. Always the guy we're looking for. Super cute. Straight up turtle. Sea turtle. Lucario, Unified Minds. Again, has this one I'm looking at. Has uh, Giratina and Garchomp in the background. I think in Garchomp's, I think it's artwork. Has Luck Metal in the background. I love that. So cool. Very well done. And the last one is Hoot Hoot from Unified Minds. I believe Ekans has like Articuno in the background. But I like the Hoot Hoot one because it's Zapdos. And like, that's not, that Zapdos is pretty dangerous for any kind of bird. And Hoot Hoot got like this huge like sweat bead on the side of his head. He's worried he doesn't want to mess with that Zapdos. So I feel like that was a really cool art. Let me make sure I'm still recording. All right, yeah, again, I went through this entire thing. <laughs> I realized I wasn't recording. Um, let's see, just call me Quentin asks, how many of the original 151 can you name from memory in order? All right, so I don't, the in order thing would totally mess me up. I don't remember the order. Um, beyond like the first like nine, <laughs> maybe 10. I think it's Caterpie. Is it Caterpie after, after like the, the starters? Uh, but like, I think if I, there used to be a website that would kind of have these trivia kind of things like name all something and you would type it in and it was just like, all right, this is this one. And I think if I kind of had, imagine like 151 squares and like, if I say Bulbasaur, it'll fill in like the first square. I bet with that kind of setup, I think I could get all of them eventually. Uh, wouldn't be fast. 
Uh, I wonder how I can name if I went to like the the Pokemon raps at the end of the original series. That was so cool and like, and you know when you first watch it, it, it was so cool because you don't know the Pokemon. You're like learning them as they introduce them in the show, and it's like, God, those raps are so cool. Good question. Uh, let's see. Fun Squad asks, my question for you is, are you hyped for the full art Charizard V promo in the new Champions Path ETB? Yes. The most interesting thing about that one is that it they start off, they led off with that on September 25th. That's my understanding, is it comes out initially versus like Hidden Fates, which makes sense to me for Pokemon Pokemon company to like make more money and keep the hype alive, or like increasing hype as we go, where they kind of had pin collection, which was like, yeah, I, I want the packs. I want to crack them open, so I'm going to buy it. Uh, the front ones are just okay. They're reprints. The arcs were just okay. Uh, then we got the, the tins, like level up. Now you get a GX. Uh, then level up again to the ETB. Oh my gosh, best promo ever. Stained glass birds. And then you got the Pokeball collections, which maybe those could be flip flop. Then you got the premium stuff. So like constantly kept getting better. Where Champion's Path, I don't know, it's kind of strange. Um, I'm fine with it because I can buy the product I want the most initially as opposed to buying a bunch of like the pin collections which i'm less excited for i think i just want one set of pins and then i'm good i don't really care for those etbs or anything uh so yeah i'm super hyped for that i feel like that is the only thing of champions path that's really worth buying um i feel like i probably get like a few for the channel for all the other ones and then you know a few to keep uh sealed and then the rest will just be charizard etbs let's see emc Ask, congrats on hitting 1k let's get to 2k my question for you is if you end up making enough income via youtube discord patreon etc would you consider doing content making full time um i would presume that there is some level of like um monetary income that if it if i were to achieve it i would do it full time i would say like we are miles and miles and miles like if uh i think it's like a friend's reference like if there's like a finish line to getting to that point like i can't even see it if i do see it it's like a dot on the horizon we're nowhere close to that um so very unlikely the way i kind of describe it is i have a full-time job i think there's a question about that later and like my hobby is collecting pokemon cards and youtube is an extension of that hobby so i would say youtube is not even the hobby the hobby is the collector the collection side of it and then the hobby is the youtube part or no extension of the hobby and then the extension of the extension is the twitch stuff so like as far as like level tracks and then when it comes to like you know uh income and stuff like that it's like so far from um reaching that point again theoretically yes uh in practice or realistically probably not Richard Omega, finally the Kaiju hand is here. If you're not sure what that means, take a look at Eternatus V Max and see if it kind of looks like a hand with like dragon for heads or for fingers. And then it's kind of like the, one of those uh, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Uh, my question is what is your favorite base set 2 card? Ah, base set 2, one, gotta be the most unpopular set that is old. <laughs> so weird. Um, it's a reprint set by definition. It's not like they changed anything. Like Legendary Collection. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Uh, like, uh, we're kind of getting off topic, but you take, and I guess the answer to that question is the Charizard, which is kind of like a cop out answer, but like it's a reprint set. So, and I don't have one, or I don't have a good, a graded one. Um, but uh, if you compare like Legendary Collection, I'm curious. You take uh, base set two charts. I don't know the answer out of my head. I didn't look it up. Base set 2 Charizard, let's say PSA X, and you compare that to Legendary Collection Charizard, and then of the rare, the hollow, the reverse hollow, like kind of like I'm curious where they all stand. Uh, and maybe that's a could be a good representation, like how base set is just like, I don't know, not liked for whatever reason. Captain Stabbin asks, congrats on 100, 1000, or hashtag 100 turtle, 1000 turtles, would you ever? ball out and buy a really old booster box like fossil or something so we do have two i've shown these a couple videos if you look over my shoulder there's the rocket one look over that one it is the base set i move those boxes a little bit i figure it'd be cool to show in the background though um so i do have a couple that was purchased a long time ago years and years ago well, maybe like three years ago and these days, unlikely, if I were to do so, I don't think it would be Fossil. Fossil was kind of cool, but uh, 
I feel like I maybe like a gym, gym challenge, gym heroes. I kind of like how they have the, the gym leaders on the fronts. Maybe Neo. Um, don't I'm not doing very well in my Neo collection. So I think that would be cool, but I'm pretty sure those are really expensive. Uh, then after that, you know, like the beginning Easter, those are, gosh, I don't even want to look at the price. And then after that, like after WotC, I'm, I'm, I really don't have much motivation. Uh, I wonder what a base set two box goes on. It's probably crazy. Let's see. Good question though. Uh, Scipio, how's it going, Scipio? Scipio does have a YouTube channel. I absolutely love that playmat. What is your favorite Pokemon modern set other than Hidden Fates? Ah, oh, yeah, Hidden Fates definitely for sure. But uh, after that, um, let's see. I did enjoy Unbroken Bonds. Uh, had the Reshizard, and I was a huge fan of that. I bought it way overpaid for some of those. Um, team, maybe Team Up, you know, they introduced the tag team concept, which I thought was really cool. Really well done. Maybe overpowered, but really, I think it was well done. And had fun. Pulling the various tag teams, uh, it was interesting, like, we pulled all of them except for, and I didn't really care what variant, uh, we weren't going for all the variants, but just some variants, and we could not find a Wailord Magikarp, but eventually I had to buy the box and just like, alright, bail out, get bailed out of this situation, we're done. Um, Unified Minds, yeah, you know what, like, Mewtwo, Mew, like, I, I guess it was a good card, but like, couldn't say I was super eager to pull out nothing like on those other sets. Uh, in fact, like the thing I was uh, hunting was Tortugas. Um, random thing, like if you're opening packs and you want a challenge uh, that's not based on how much the card costs, is pick a, especially if there's a Pokemon that you really like or whatever, like pick an uncommon or common uh, and say like, all right, I'm going to pull the reverse of this uncommon card and see how long it takes to do it. Surprisingly difficult. Uh, Dylan asks, have you, hope you get monetized soon. What is your favorite TCG set? What is your favorite TCG set? Uh, yeah, if, 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 uh, within the question, it can says, besides Hidden Fates, like, definitely Hidden Fates, absolute home run, absolute masterpiece that I, maybe they'll never be able to reproduce that same hype, because it was just perfect on so many ways. Uh, like, I was hooked, like, hook, line, and sinker. The first video I ever saw of the Japanese set, like, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the coolest thing ever. Um, I have no idea if it's going to be reprinted in English. I bought, I like went on eBay like that day. I was like, started buying as many copies or a bunch of stuff from Japan. Bought an entire master set, a uh, bunch of Charizards, a bunch of Rayquazas, and then a bunch of boxes. Um, and then like, hit. I was mixed emotions when Hidden Fates was announced. Like, Yes, this thing is going to be in English. This is going to be so much fun. It's like, oh my gosh, I spent all this money on the Japanese stuff, where obviously the priority will now be on the English. Uh, luckily, the set is so popular that that's fine. The stuff kind of like, maybe, I'm sure it dipped for quite a while, but now it's kind of back, and uh, the Japanese side is doing well. I bought a bunch of Korean boxes, did a bunch of those openings. Those are pretty cheap, by the way. And uh, uh, I'm not sure I'm going to complete a Korean master set, but um, yes. Jap or I'm off on a tangent, but that is the only set that I bought like card slash product for that is not promos beyond like a single box. Like I think we did like um, double blaze box, like one box or something like that. Uh, good question. Let's see. Shauna asks, congrats on 1K. How would you rate the Pokemon generations from least favorite to most favorites? Ah, uh, definitely like the, I was most like, God, when, yeah, when the game, when the show first came out, I was just, loved it so much. So definitely base set into base set two. I did play gold um, as well. Didn't play, was it Ruby Sapphire? I didn't play that, but I feel like I was aware of it. Like I was hung around people that did play it. Uh, so I guess gen three from there. Then we're gonna actually fast forward to the most recent one, gen eight, uh, just because I did play Sword and Shield. The game was good, I'm not, I'm not, I, I feel like I, the, the, my, the fondness of memories from like red and gold, like, I don't know, 100x <laughs> what it was for Sword and Shield. But either way, uh, you know, it does that does have sentimental value to me for like that generation of Pokemon. So then I guess eight, and then we'll go back to four, five, six, seven. Uh, yeah, to be honest, because I didn't play the games, I wasn't really exposed to them as much. And like, as far as the TCG goes, it's still kind of like, everything I just said still kind of like applies. And to be honest, like some of them, I guess in, all like the more recent generations, some Pokemon are just kind of weird. Like, 
Huh, you guys are really struggling for new ideas, I can tell. Uh, let's see, Christine. Uh, so this is Josh. Hey, Josh, Josh I'm using. All right, let's see. My Q question is about when did you start collecting such playing Pokemon? Um, yeah, so base sets, I guess technically, um, but then more like Jungle Fossil Rockets took a break. Come around 2017, I think it was at the time the booster boxes I bought that just like, hey, look, I just want to open these. It was like Burning Shadows. I think you know, uh, Ultra Prison like literally just first came out. Whatever year that was, was I started to get back into it. Um, yeah, Guardians Rising, Crimson Invasion. Uh, that's when I got back into it. Then probably like the past, I don't know, year or so, trying to pick it up competitively or learn the competitive side of it. Winter winter beat tv winter beat tv uh winter bt that's what it is <laughs> uh it's more of a question than question but can you upload a video with your favorite cards from your collection i think that's a great idea and something i will look to do in the near future i slow roll it like we'll do like a top 10 and do like two each episode or something like that uh what are your favorite videos slash streams to do definitely definitely pokemart um i think the I absolutely I love doing it. It's a lot of fun because it's stuff that I should do anyway. Uh, if I'm going to continue to put money into this hobby, you know, I want to do it, do it smartly, of course. Um, you know, don't buy something that you know gets devalued over time. The only way to do it is do research. So like, it's kind of like win-win where I do it because I want to create this content and too like I absolutely just want to know and I want to find out for myself and and then in the same time share with you guys so definitely a lot of fun and it's super beneficial as a collector to do it